For this Auditor's Toolkit lecture, we're going to go through a complete example of an audit work paper documentation. The first thing I need you to do is log into Top Hat and go into our class section. Within that class section, you should see an example of Work Paper Flow Excel spreadsheet. Download that spreadsheet and open it in Excel. Now what you see in this video may not exactly reflect what you have in your Top Hat class section, but the bottom line is the example of Work Paper Flow Excel spreadsheet is near the top of the section in one of the beginning folders, so please find it as best you can. Well now that you have the Excel spreadsheet open, this is what it should look like. If you go to the first tab which says Work Paper Index. And that work paper index is the key, the table of contents for all our audit work paper documentation. You'll notice that there's other tabs along the bottom. I've selected certain tabs to include in this Excel spreadsheet to help the process flow a little easier for you. So we're going to have something from section 10 on our trial balance. And you'll see that tab down below. I'm clicking on it. But I'm going to go back to the work paper index. The focus of this particular video is going to be on Section 55, Other Current Liabilities. If you were to do this out in the real world, you're going to have sections for each one of these, unless, for example, a company doesn't have inventory, then you wouldn't have a Section 30. But in general, each of these sections is going to have their own work paper documentation. So back to our focus on 55 and Other Current Liabilities. So when we go to our work paper working trial balance, work paper 10-1, we'll see the trial balance all listed with the prepared by client beginning balance of December 31st, the amount that we're going to be auditing and checking. Now as we go through the audit, we may have some adjustments and you'll see work paper 90-2, which is near the end of our video screen here. That's going to be where we record any journal entries that will wind up being posted to this trial balance. So let's keep our focus on our other current liabilities. And you'll see, as I scroll down, we've got a bank line of credit that we're going to focus on. And that bank line of credit is what these work papers will all be focused on. So first off, we'll have our excerpt from our audit program. The audit program being the list, the checklist, the guide to the steps that we need to do. So let's go to Work Paper 55-1. And here, I've performed some of these tests already. So these are the tests we're going to focus on. Obtaining the business line of credit statement. We're going to make sure that it ties out to our balance sheet and determine if there are any adjustments that need to happen. And then finally, we're going to state in our opinion if the bank line of credit balance reported on the financial statements is fairly presented in accordance with GAAP. So here is our checklist. So let's go through the rest of these. So let's go to our 55-2, our bank line of credit lead sheet. And what does the lead sheet do? It reflects that balance as though we've taken this particular working trial balance section over on 10-1 and copied it over to our lead sheet so that we'll be able to work with it here and verify that the balance is what we want it to be. If we had multiple accounts, we would list the accounts, let's say inventory, which might have work in process, raw materials, finished goods. We might have an inventory lead sheet that lists all those different accounts to come up with our total inventory. But in this particular example, we only have the bank line of credit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab that 2020 balance from our trial balance. If we go over here, it's $80,000. That's what the client has prepared as the total. So we go back to our 55-2 lead sheet and we're going to put $80,000 in that field. Now where did we get it? We got it from our work paper 10-1 and we'll put that in there. So it agreed to our trial balance. Now we can move on to the process of figuring out whether we have any net adjustments that we're going to put on this lead sheet 
to agree to our total adjusted balance. Let's look at our 55-3 uh, bank line of credit summary. And on here, it turns out we have two line of credits, one with U.S. Bank for 30000 and one with M&T Bank for 100000 But that's the max they could be. What have we actually used of these bank line of credits, that's what we're going to want to report on our financial statements. Now in 2019, our ending balance was $25,000 on the U.S. Bank and $40,000 on the M&T. Well, we've got to come up with what our new ending balance is for these particular items that will total up to our total bank line of credit. So we go to work paper 55-4, which is our bank line of credit statement, and that's our U.S. bank. And you'll see it's 25250 That's what our ending balance is because there was some interest incurred, some interest paid, and then an additional uh, fee that for the annual use or actually having a line of credit of $250. So the ending balance is 25250 So we will go back to our line of credit summary, and we will put 25250 in there as our balance. Now, our work paper reference, well, we got that off of work paper 55-4. So we'll put 55-4. Now we know exactly where that number came from. You'll see this whole ticking and tying process helps the auditor to quickly go back and find things throughout the process. So now we'll go to bank statement 55-5, and our M&T loan is 55300 There was an additional 10000 of borrowing, plus we had some interest again, and we paid that interest, and again, an annual fee. So we have 55300 as our balance. So we'll go back over to our summary, and we'll put 55300 and that will be our balance for the M&T bank. We'll do our reference of 55-5. So now we know what our balance is for our bank line of credit. But if you'll remember, the lead sheet shows us that our client only had 80,000 there, and we have figured out it's 80,550. So that means we're gonna to have to have a $550 adjustment which is all based on those annual fees, but it does increase our end of year line of credit balance so that we'll have an adjusted balance of 80,550. Now that's what we're ultimately gonna want on our work paper, but we wanna document this adjustment. And where do we do that? We do that in our work paper 90-1 and work paper 90-2. First off, let's do 90-2 and the proposed journal entry. We know on 12-31-2020, we received some bank service fees that totaled $550 that the client didn't record. And what that did is it increased our bank line of credit for $550. So we're gonna credit that. So that's one that we're going to book. So we'll actually show that we prepared it. And that's what we need to do on each of these worksheets is show that we prepared these items. So we need to make sure that we do that on each one of these. Now that we've prepared our journal entry and we know that's going to affect the income statement and the liabilities, we know that the lack of recording bank service fees, that's the explanation. So for 90-1, we'll record that on 55-2 uh, where we had that difference uh, going back there again of that $550. We'll record that 550 that's the amount that the statements are going to be off. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to, in, it's actually underreported our uh, liabilities. We'll record that it understated our liabilities by 550 
and it over recorded our income of 550 because the service charges were not done so we've got our journal entry on 90-2 again we're going to carry that over to our working trial balance and on that working trial balance we're going to show a $550 increase to our um, bank uh, line of credit we're going to reference our lead sheet which will be our 55-2 and that's also going to have an impact on our retained earnings. It's going to lower our retained earnings by 550. And we are back at balance. And this is the working trial balance that we'll use for our financial statements. And in our work paper, we're going to show that we completed the bank credit line. That's in 55-4 and 55-5. Those are where our statements are. We're going to prepare our summary, and we did that also, and that's going to be our 55-3. And we're also going to determine if there were adjustments, which we did say there were, and we're going to put those out on 90-2. And we'll say service, service fees were not recorded. So that concludes that portion of it. Now we come back and we decide, does our uh, bank line of credit appear to be um, fairly stated? And we're going to say, yes, it does. Now, as we do an overview, we've got our working trial balance. And you would do this for each of these accounts. You're going to have an audit program, which will include all your activities for every section that we've got in our audit program. We're going to have our lead sheets for the key accounts. We're going to make sure that's updated and that ties out to our working trial balance. We're going to have our summary, which may list different activities that will add up to the balance we want. We're going to have some of the detailed statements that will be used as our backup to ensure that we've got that for those account values. And then if there are any misstatements, and journal entries that needed to be recorded related to the audit. That completes our Auditor's Toolkit lecture on an audit work paper example.